Former Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens wrote a new book called Six Amendments, How and Why We Should Change the Constitution. And The Atlantic wrote an article about it yesterday that focused on one change specifically that he wants to make, and that is outlawing the death penalty. He wants to get rid of the death penalty. Now, it's an interesting change for a guy like Stevens because he was on the court when they reinstated the death penalty. So for those of you who don't know, it was gone for about four years, I believe in the 70s, and then they brought it back. So it was found unconstitutional, and then on his court, on his watch, it came back. And in fact, he voted for to bring it back. So what's happened now is that he's followed all the death penalty cases closely since then, and he realizes that it's way too unpredictable and that he made the wrong decision because, I mean, how many innocent people are on death row and some are exonerated and some are not and it's just this massive clusterfuck and there's, you know, it's a racist system. A white person and a black person commit the same crime and the black person is more likely to get the death penalty and the white person doesn't. There's, you know, horrible representation from lawyers. They don't get an adequate defense. Just so many different problems. Plea deals behind the scenes that are kind of corrupt that find the wrong people guilty. This isn't something you could play life and death with. And he saw this and he went, oh, fuck, I was dead wrong. See, at the time, he thought that they had, the states had narrowed the scope of the death penalty so much that it's acceptable. He thought that, like, oh, okay, it's only for uh, murder cases and it's got to be a, a, even then specific murder cases only and the bar is so high and then there's the guaranteed appeal. So he thought we're weeding out all the bad decisions and it's only going to be the right decisions. But he realized that's wrong because in practice it didn't work as well as it's supposed to on paper. So he proposed, so his proposed change to the, to clarify the Eighth Amendment is this, quote, Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments such as the death penalty inflicted. So do you see the difference there? The Eighth Amendment would normally read, no cruel and unusual punishment, and then it would end. But he's adding no cruel and unusual punishment such as the death penalty inflicted. He added those words to try to clarify it. Now. The reason why I wanted to discuss this story is because I think there, this is interesting from a psychological perspective. Because I think this is him, John Paul Stevens saying, at the, at, saying a few things at the same time here. This is his way of saying, I'm sorry. Okay? And this is also his way of covering his tracks. And trying to pawn it off. You know? And go, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I ruled the wrong way, but hey, man, if we clarified it, it would have been better. You know, if the Eighth Amendment had said no cruel and unusual punishment, such as the death penalty, then I, I would have had to rule the other way. So, yeah, let's make this change to the Constitution so to make sure that, you know, we fix it for the future. So it's kind of like him covering his ass a little bit and saying, did I fuck up? Yes, I fucked up. I'm sorry about that. But hey, man, come on, look, it's not clear. The Eighth Amendment wasn't clear. And I have a pretty uh, angry response to that. What the fuck, man? What the, I mean, what the fuck? The Eighth Amendment bans cruel and unusual punishment, and your argument is that sometimes killing people isn't cruel? I mean, it's also unusual. Let's get that out of the way right now, too. Because what does unusual mean? Not usual, not the norm. What is norm? Uh, the majority of people doing it. Okay, well, guess what? The majority of the countries in the world have banned the death penalty. So what we're talking about here is something that is unusual by definition. It is unusual by definition, and it, it's of course cruel by definition. You know how you can determine whether or not something is uh, cruel or unusual? Think about it if it was applied to you. Or to your kids. <laughs> you know? Somebody in your family, your best friend, whatever, significant other, doesn't matter. Think about it within the context of that. So if you answer the question, would I like to be killed? <laughs> if, if you know, I was found guilty of a certain crime. If the answer is no, then yes, that is cruel. Having state-sanctioned murder is cruel. And keep in mind, regardless of what your personal opinion is on the issue, because I hear you, I'm torn on the idea of the death penalty. In theory, I think it makes perfect sense. Somebody murders somebody, if we know that they're a hideous human being who did like, like the Anders Breivik, the Norway shooter who killed children and just went on a rampage, like 80 people. Like, yeah, I, I look at that guy and say, fuck you, die, son of a bitch. So putting aside your personal feelings on the issue, which, again, I'm split on, 
uh, it, the Eighth Amendment is totally clear. You know, if you take the text at face value, if you read the text and just apply it using logic, let's ban cruel and unusual punishment. In my mind, what that means is this. It's very simple. No death penalty, no torture. Everything else is open to interpretation and debate and discussion. You know, is a life sentence cruel and unusual? Well, it depends. What's the severity of the crime? So I would argue in some cases, of course not. L life in prison is perfectly acceptable. But death is cruel and is unusual by definition. Torture is cruel, is unusual by definition. So for you now to come out and say, Oh, wasn't clear, man! Wasn't clear! You know what it is? Here's what pisses me off about it. What pisses me off about it is, people can be convinced of anything if there's, a, you know, a charismatic enough person arguing for it, or if there's the weight of people behind it. Like, they did studies where, uh, you know, a group of people who are in on the study would say, oh, hey, what color is this? And it would be something that's blue. But everybody is uh, who's in on the study is supposed to say, it's yellow. So, like, six people in a row say, it's yellow, it's yellow, it's yellow. And then it gets to the one person who's not part of the study, and their goal is to say either it's blue or it's yellow. Uh, you know, they have to say what it is. And they always agree with the people who got it wrong on purpose. If it's blue, they're like, yeah, no, it's yellow. They look at the other people like, oh, did I fit in appropriately? So it's this group thing, it's this sheepish, sheepish mentality where people say, well, I don't know, man, the history of the United States, we had the death penalty forever, and I guess it existed in the Founders' times, and we're so used to it, that I guess it isn't cruel and unusual. But to believe that means to change the very definition of the words cruel and unusual. So you're not, you're not making any sense. You're, you're throwing out logic, and you're just saying, I will buy into the dogma of the people who preceded me because the majority of them believed it, so I'll just go with that. It's a sad, sad thing, and it shows that you're not, you're not sharp enough to really be in a position to make decisions that affect everybody like this. And I think now John Paul Stevens actually might realize that, which is why he's writing this book. It's a weird mea culpa, and it's a weird attempt to try to cover your own tracks. When, look, man, I'm tired of this bullshit. You should have, from the beginning, realized if you're using logic and you're applying this according to the text and you're just making basic deductions, you'd go... Yeah, this is a no-brainer. Even if I'm in favor of the death penalty personally, it is clearly unconstitutional. So unless you change that Eighth Amendment, we're going to have to go against it.